time, so. And here we go. The recording has started, so anybody that don't want to be recorded, not you, Gerhard, <laughs> can leave the meeting. Uh, but uh, I will just do a short introduction and share my screen. Uh, this one and Hopefully you, you can all see my PowerPoint presentation. We won't spend a lot of time in the PowerPoint. Uh, so first of all, welcome to, to all to the Ask the Expert DAX session in the Power BI User Group Denmark. Yeah, uh, some housekeeping rules. Please uh, remember to mute yourself. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, use chat during the session, pure queue, or just ask a question in the chat. Yes, and the meeting will be recorded. And today's host is uh, Lars from uh, from Microsoft, uh, and uh, Gerhard is joining us from Austria. Uh, and Lars, will you just introduce yourself, and then Gerhard, you can take take yes. over after after Lars. Yes, I will. Uh, I am uh, Lars uh, Andersen from uh, Microsoft in Denmark. I'm a, a technical specialist, so my responsibility is to know uh, technical things about Power BI, and I've been with Microsoft Denmark for a little more than seven years now. Over to you, Gerhard. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, my name is Gerhard. As, as Eric already mentioned, I'm from Austria and um, supporting in today's meeting on some um, dark specific questions. I've been working with Microsoft, let's say, data products for 15 years now and with Power BI and Power Pivot and everything that was before, um, actually since it was on the market. Um, and yeah, I have my own blog, so if you're interested, um, you can have a look there. It's a lot of Power BI topics and also a lot of um, big data and Databricks topics, um, which I'm working a lot with recently. Um, yeah, that's it about yeah. me. If you have any questions, you can just reach me either on Twitter and or via my blog. So if you have any questions, feel free. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, my name is Eric Svensson. I also have a blog where I blog a lot about uh, Power BI and I uh, run the uh, Danish user group together with the uh, used and uh, Jens uh, Vestergaard, uh, all Microsoft uh, Danish MVPs. But uh, Today, uh, we will shortly introduce the experts uh, sessions and then we'll go through the questions and uh, hopefully get them answered. And uh, if you have questions uh, afterwards, we hopefully have some time for that. And then I'll just go through the, the next sessions that we have in, the, in the, our user group. So, uh, yeah, the first question that we received, I will, I will. This is a question, and then I will let uh, Gerhard take over yep. uh, to answer that. So I'll stop my sharing of the screen, and you can. Oh, actually, I thought you would at least read the question. Ah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so let me share it again. So the question one was uh, the user selects from a drop down list in an Excel sheet or perhaps a slider slicer in uh, in Power BI uh, that uh, where the parameters should be in a data in the database, i.e. the data model, and that should be adjusted. And the entries in the database are uh, cost values and should given some basic parameters for uh, specific uh, lo uh, enterprise location, region, and quarters. And what they need is based on that parameter that the user selects, that the values uh, of the database should be adjusted based on a factor related to what is selected in the parameter. 
So there is a table with parameter factors, for instance, indexation based on, on quarters. And so the concept sh should be something similar to, to apply if you have inflation, inflation or you want to convert prices from year X to what it would be equivalent for today and vice versa. So it, that hopefully ex yeah, I think at some point it explains it. Um, yeah. I also had a little call with Elia on this, like um, the the lady who asked the question. And I'll um, let me share my screen now. Um, is she here actually? I think so. Yeah, I saw her locked on to the. Yeah. So maybe she can also jump in if I'm um, explaining something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it should um, at least at some point reflect what she was actually asking for. So let me go ahead. Yeah, Elia, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's she has raised her hand, so yeah, feel free sure. to unmute. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, what we did is so after after Elia explained the, the problem to me, I built a little mock-up, and it is basically um, that it's a construction company at some point, they are building stuff. Um, and there is um, some some properties to each building. Um, one of them being the quality, where it's like a good building of good quality, of average quality, or of, put, of poor quality. And each building has also been built in a certain year or quarter. And um, each building had a cost or a value. So I just took some buildings here that. I had a list on the internet, I found a list on the internet with the most famous buildings, so I used those and applied them on some, some properties. And let's say the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona has an average quality and was built in year uh, 2020 um, quarter four and cost 5,000 <laughs> euros. <laughs> I think so that's made up, under, made up this underestimating. I just made up this list and it's it's a coincidence that Notre Dame is very poor because it's almost burnt down. Um, anyway, so um, as you can see, each of them is assigned a particular quality and a particular um, year quarter or time frame when it was actually built. And the, the question from um, Ilya was um, how would um, how would the, the numbers look like, for example, for Notre Dame, if it wasn't built in, in Q2 2020, but if it was built in, um, let's say, Q3 2021? Because um, there are some price changes, of course, the material gets more expensive, labor gets more expensive, etc. And it's some kind of uh, what if analysis um, to see um, what it would cost to be the same building again in a different time or in a different quality. Okay, so uh, what we do have additionally is um, those two tables, like the quality table and also the um, year quarter table, and both of them contain a factor. So these are also made up, so no worries. Um, so if something is very poor, then the total value um, is decreased by 50%. If it's poor quality, it's on 75%, it's average quality, it's 100%. If it's good quality or excellent quality, it gets um, more expensive and is 1.5 times the price or 1.25 times the price for, for excellent and good. And the same um, factor or a similar factor we do also have for um, our time frame for the year quarter. So back in Q1 2020, the factor was 80, and then it increased steadily um, until it reached a value of um, 103 in um, Q4 2021. So basically what we need to do now is um, a user selects a, a, um, a quality. So let's just do this here. and. For uh, foremost, do the calculation in Excel what it would look like. So the user would select, um, for example, excellent quality because he wants to check how much the building would cost if it would have been built in excellent quality. So that's basically what the user selects in the slicer. 
and um, the current quality would be the one derived from here. So we need to get the value for average from our um, quality table. We, okay, now I'm, haha, <laughs> we look ups. <laughs> I'm, I'm not an extra guy, so <laughs> don't blame me on this. You need to select the whole table, God. And do I need to select the whole table? Here? Yeah. Okay. Actually, the first value you need to select the the, ah, the, the value it. you want yeah, to yeah, look at. So yeah. it will be C seventeen as the as your first uh, statement. Oh. Yeah. Table array index column one, and I know you always need to set this one to false. That's the wrong then, then it is two, right? Yeah. So um, now if someone selects excellent quality, what we basically need to do, we need to take the value divided by the current quality, quality and multiply it with the um, requested quality, right? So instead of 5,000 euro as it, as it initially costed the Sagrada Familia, if it was built with, or if you want to build it with excellent quality, it would actually cost 7,500. The Guggenheim Museum was already built in excellent quality, so basically it costs the same and so on and so forth. So basically for every row that we have in our table, we need to consider the current quality and the factor of the current quality and um, also the selected quality that the user wants to have. And that's basically the requirement. And the very same also goes for um, year and quarter. So I hope the, the, the general requirement is clear here. Um, it also doesn't make a difference whether you do this in Excel or you do this in Power BI. Um, it was just simpler for me um, to, to do it in Excel as also the original question um, was actually based on an uh, Excel spreadsheet. So um, those three tables are loaded into the Power Pivot data model. So that's basically the same as in Power BI. It's, Just um, it looks a slightly different, but it's actually the very same. And so what we do have here is um, we have our um, our tables that contain the factors for quality and year quarter, as you can see here. Um, I created a a measure that basically says, okay, if there is a single value selected or if only a single row is selected for, for that particular um, quality uh, yeah, factor table, if that's the case, I use the value that's selected, otherwise I use one. That's just to, to display um, in the end what the end user selected. Okay, I do have the very same also for the year and quarter. And where it actually gets interesting is um, when we do the actual calculation. So, can I interrupt? Yes, sir. Is there a reason why you don't use uh, use the selected value? You could also use selected value. Yeah, doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Um, the, the only difference probably is if you would have um, multiple columns that a user could select. So if it's not only year quarter, but you would also have like a, a proper text which says quarter one in year 2020, and yeah. you would want um, this calculation to work in both cases, regardless of what the user selects, then you can use this approach. Because selected value is always tied to a particular column. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. I agree. 
So that's why I went for this approach. But yeah, you could also use selected value or you can use has one value and do an if. So there are probably like 50 different ways how you could do this. In <laughs> yeah. I, I went for this one. So and now what we need to do is um, do this calculation as we have done here. So basically for each row, get the current quality, get the, fa the, the factor for the current quality, divide it and multiply it to get the final value. And in the end, um, we also want to do a, a sum over the values that we have calculated. OK, so um, as we are doing the calculation row by row, we need to do we need to have an iterator. That's usually those um, X functions. So average X, min X, or in our case, as we um, finally want to um, sum the values, we use sum X. Um, so if I go to my calculation, I do have a calculated measure which says, OK, sum X across the buildings. So the building table that we've seen, and then we take the value of the current row. So that's executed then in the row context of the buildings. And then we check um, whether a row has been selected or a single value has been selected in our quality table. If that's the case, um, we take the, um, the selected value from that quality table and divide it by um, the current value. So the, the current value I get by doing a lookup value from the um, existing quality in the current row and doing the lookup on the quality table to get the, the factor for the current row. So what you see with uh, what I've done with the lookup value here, it's basically the very same that we did is with the VLOOKUP in Excel. Okay, and so we do this for the quality and the very same also for our year quarter, for our um, timely um, factors. And then the result is calculated for each row and in the end it's summed. And what does this uh, look like now in the final um, pivot table? So I just created a pivot table on top of the data model. Um, I basically pulled in the whole buildings table with the quality, the year quarter and the original value. And I have put the two other tables as, as, um, as filters. And this now allows me to basically change a filter for example, the desired quality is average for all buildings. And then um, it calculates it again for every row and sums the values. So if every building that I've ever built would have been in uh, would have been built with average quality, it would have cost me um, 39,000 instead of 28,000. And as you can see, some of them get cheaper. So this one, for example, gets cheaper because it was already built in good quality. If we only build it in average quality, it costs, um, I don't know, 10% less. Or 20%. And that's basically um, how we can do this um, kind of forecast or what if analysis um, in Excel or in Power BI or in DAX, um, yeah, whatever you want to use. And this works for the quality and of course also works if I select a specific um, time frame or quarter um, to, for example, calculate how much would an existing building cost if I build it two years later or three quarters later or whatever. And yeah, that's basically um, what we came up with um, and how we can solve this in, in DAX. And as I understood, um, Elia, that's 
basically what she wanted and what she was looking for for quite some time. Ex exactly. Thanks, Emilion. Uh, I, I actually see that someone has spotted my issue on the chat uh, when I was looking at it in the forums and, uh, and trying to find out how to do it. All solutions were referring to selected value, but I'm an Excel girl. Uh, so <laughs> when I was trying to, I mostly work with the data models and DAX in Excel. So when I was uh, trying to recreate these solutions, I couldn't find out how to how to do this selected value thing, you know, and it's because it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this uh, you, you, you did some tweaks there that actually solved the problem. So thank you very much. I've been stuck with this issue for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. so uh, maybe maybe as a side note, as you just mentioned, um, Unfortunately, um, so it's, it's like a different version of Power Pivot that sits um, that ships with Excel, and it's a different one that ships with Power BI. And as you as you mentioned, um, some of the functions that, or some of the newer functions that uh, were introduced in Power BI, um, do not yet exist in Power Pivot for Excel. So especially this selected value, for example, doesn't exist. And that's also a reason why I have to use this if count rows equals one to basically find out whether it has been filtered down to one row or not. Perhaps you could, uh, if you uh, open a browser and, and enter the dax.guide, uh, I put that in the, the chat as well. Then you will be able to sort on, you know, to find any, any function in the dax language. Uh, and you will be able to see to the right uh, which where is supported. So the the all all selected, for instance, in, that you're sharing now is supported in Excel uh, and in Power BI. Yeah. But the selected value uh, Excel will there will be no green icons to the right. Selected value, there you go. Yeah. yeah, so it's not supported in Excel currently. No. Okay. Um, Great. Any, yep. any any other questions for... Looking uh, at this guy, it doesn't really offer any alternative uh, solutions or, or workarounds when these formulas are not in one uh, platform or the other, is it? I yes. think uh, if you scroll down, there might be... Yeah, the has one value is actually listed there. Uh, it, but yeah. is has one value supported in Excel? Yeah. Okay, uh, but it just really, gives you whether it has one value, not, not whether it. Um, there is no, not it doesn't um, say that there is one function that gives you the selected value. No, which, no, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically just syntax sugar for what I did, more or yeah. less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Um, should yeah. we share? Should I share the Excel? I mean, it's just yes. It's, yes, please. I don't know if you have a space where you can um, upload it. If you just uh, email me the file, I will share share it okay. to, to all the users. In great. In the, in the community. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And this also leads us to our second question. Actually, I have the slide deck open so I can do it. Here. Perfect. <laughs> um, so the question is, um, so I often get confused about how to use the many select and filter options within Calculate. Is there a good rule of thumb you could recommend? Can you say a few words about when to use and not to use the functions all, all except, all selected, selected columns, etc.? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's here. <laughs> that's so, not a... um, I think there is actually a lot of information um, about those function online. Um, one of them is um, the DAX guide that I just showed you. That's basically DAX.guide. I can also um, put it in the chat. No, I can't. There you go. Someone did it already? No. I put the selected value in, so. OK. Yeah, so that's, that basically gives a lot of information about the functions that, that you were asking for. And the good thing about it, it also gives you examples. 
So for example, the all. It shows you the syntax and uh, which was recently introduced is on tax.2, which is another um, website by the same guys, Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari, where you can basically try this tax statement online. OK, so you can just go here if you have if you want to know how all, for example, um, actually works, you can just open the tax guide and then it links you to the tax.2 which allows you to just execute the very same tax statement on one of the sample databases that they provide. If it opens up, it usually does. Yeah, so that's the interface that you see here. You can just say run. And then it runs the command and As you can see in this case, um, this still um, returns all colors because you say, okay, give me all products regardless of filter. So even if you specify a filter afterwards, it's, it's ignored. Okay, but that's yeah. um, that's also explained in the guide why this why this happens. Um, so what I can recommend is basically just have a look at the guide. Um, if you have any specific questions there. It's actually much better than the official Microsoft guide. If you want to have some details on, on DAX um, functions and, and how to write proper DAX. Um, and especially with this new DAX.2, you can immediately do some um, some querying and see how uh, how it behaves on a, on a sample database. And then you can hopefully apply the same logic also to your um, real world data set. Yeah. Uh... I've, I will also in the resources include uh, a, a video series from SQL BI, a sort of series of 10 videos that go through uh, some of these functions, the all functions, the all selected, the keep filters. Because for me at least, uh, when we when we use it in, in a DAX query, it, uh, it sometimes uh, blows my mind what has actually happened, but typically we use the the functions in in uh, measures, uh, and there it might that you can can't refer to it as in the same way as when you do a, a query. Uh, uh, um, Lotte also asked whether uh, when you use these filter functions. Uh, does it need to be in a specific order? And I guess so you're you have multiple of them. Yeah. So if I have a calculate statement and then have my my expression and then a all date table, all selected product table, whatever, <laughs> yeah. the, um, it doesn't matter. So it's a um, all of them are applied, and what's let's say what's left. Um, um, is used for the actual calculation. So if you filter on, if you have two filters, one on um, year 2021 and another one on um, product color red, then you would get um, all the um, all red products that have been sold in 2021, regardless of um, how you order them. And that's within the same calculate statement, right? Yes. And does that, do you know whether that's applied if you have uh, nested calculate statements as well? Um, if you have nested calculate statements, um, but that's where the keep filters and remove filters uh, functions come in um, to explicitly tell, tell a calculation to, to obey the previous filters or to explicitly remove them. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, what I would just do, I would just try it. Give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that's also what I do most of the time, because instead of um, looking it up online and browsing through several web pages, it's probably most of the time much easier if you just um, open up Duck Studio and write your, your, your statement there and do the test on your own. Yeah. That, that's what I also do. I mean, 
it's not that I write a duck statement that's 20 lines of code out of my mind. <laughs> you don't. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Unfortunately. You, have, you have to be Italian to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not too yeah. far from Austria to Italy, but oh, we haven't come to that yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are mountains in between. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I can basically say about um, those different um, functions that modify the filter context. There is a lot of information online. I would just check it and um, just try it. Whatever works. OK. OK. Uh... Could you just show the next question, perhaps? Because then I will uh, open the PBIX file and then share it. <laughs> so the next question, question number three, it's actually from the same person. Um, so I'm trying to calculate the average difference in energy consumption of multiple users from one year start to another year end. The start year and end year of the calculation are selected values from outside filters. There can be anything from zero to five years between start and end. Some users are missing data in year, in a year or two. Only users who, has, who have data the entire year span should be included in the calculation. Based on the data above, um, the average difference in consumption when selecting start year 2017 and end year 2019 would only be based on user sets since both X, X and Y are missing data in some of the years. If I select 2018 to 2019, the user Y would be included in my calculations. My problem is how do the how do I filter out the users which don't have data the entire year span? Yeah, and uh, I have tried to give give that a a shot. You took so right. Yeah, I, you can see my screen now, right? Yeah. So what I did was to build a model with the uh, with the data. I yes. tried to do a uh, build a star schema model where I have the fact table in the middle here with the consumption and then a user table and then a date table. Uh, the, the date table only cons sorry the consumption is then the list of consumption for each of the users and the the dates is all the dates in, in every year that not relevant here. And then I have a user list. Uh, it's just because it's the best practice to have a star scheme. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so so this is my, this is the sample data uh, that doesn't, that and this slicer does not affect this one. So uh, it doesn't matter what I select here. I have removed the connections of the interactions between these two. So we have a slicer that uh, from outside uh, our table of a list of users uh, will affect the data. So what I first did was to create a effect called selected years that counts how many years that are actually selected uh, so when I click or multi-select, you'll see that I'll get the number of selected years as a as a measure. And the uh, the DAX for that is relatively simple. It's selected years where I count rows from all selected date year. Now I use all selected because the filter context comes outside of my of my visual uh, and if I click this one you'll see that because I intersect and I have a filter here and a filter here I will get zero years selected because it's now selected in here uh, so there's no uh, intersect between uh, the values. Now, the next thing is how many years does the user have? So I created a, a table. Let me just. With a, a calculation of 
when I select 2017 and 19, the X user is represented in X in 17 and 19, so they have two. Set is also selected, also represented in the two years, whereas Y doesn't have uh, data in 2017, so it only has uh, one year of data. The, the DAX for user years is like this. In this case, I calculate and I count rows based on the values in the date year column. <clears throat> because I have relationships between our consumption table, etc., I need to I supply it with with the relationship table in order to uh, let the let the filter uh, affect the my values table here. Now, the next thing is uh, to create a calculation on should should the uh, should the users be included in my calculation so the cal the measure here is simply if uh, the selected years measure that was how many year i had selected is the same as the user has years so in this case we'll see that uh, when they are equal to each other we will get a 1 otherwise a zero. So in this case, the user Y doesn't fulfill our idea of uh, they, as they don't have uh, information in 2018, so they won't be comparable. Uh, that shouldn't be included. Now, the next thing was actually, then I could then simply copy the table and then use the visual filters, say include only the users that has a one in the should be included. And that will give me a list of X and Z. Now, if we want to uh, have a measure that takes this measure into account, so we actually want to filter it, I then uh, what I call use a DAX filter. So I simply create a measure called the included consumption, where I calculate the consumption, which is just the sum of consumption values. And then I filter all the users. So I use the all statement to all users and filter that to uh, <coughs> should be included, should be equals one. This means that we won't get any values for uh, Y because it has a zero here. So the, the table that, where did my formula bar go? <laughs> here. Uh, so the value will be zero and therefore not included in the all users and we'll get a list of, of values. Okay, so when I click all the years, you'll see that the only user we get returned will be the set because it's the only user that has uh, data in uh, all three years. If I click 2018 and 19, this should be Y and set and showing the, the value for the user. Does that make sense? Even for Lotte that uh, raised the question, you're welcome to unmute Lotte. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Uh, my only problem is that my maximum year and my minimum year is from two different uh, date tables um, due to other factors. Um, um, so I don't know if I can use that one with selected years. Since no, in that case, I would, for example, have year 2017 from one table and 19 from another one. And the span would include 2018. Whereas in your example, you selected 17 and 19. Yeah. 
And in my example, that would then <clears throat> exclude the X user because X users does not have data in 18. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So um, I think in general, you could use the very same or actually very similar approach, but instead of, of calculating the selected years as a count rows, um, as, as Eric has done here, you could just do a, um, I would probably do a max on the, on the end date yeah. or on the end year and do a minus a min of the, of the, of the start year, which would give you then 2019. If so, if you select end year 2019 and start year 2017, which basically subtract um, 2017 from 2019, which would mean um, it's, um, three, no two, <laughs> <laughs> and and this would give you the selected years then, and then you the rest of the formula would be very similar. Yeah, I, I think that would work as well. Yeah, I, I had something like this in mind as well, but just couldn't get my head around it. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any other comments about this? Then I will. Actually, we only received the have only three three questions. So apparently, DAX is not that hard, <laughs> 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 or it's hard to explain. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, Christian also says in the chat you could. Uh, Union the, t the the two values from uh, table one and two to get the, the list of unique uh, years if you have them in, in separate tables. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Then you have uh, about uh, one. Then you can unmute yourself, and I'll give you thirty seconds to to do that. Otherwise, I will sum up today's session and uh, say a big thank you to Gerhard for participating. Uh, did I hear somebody unmute or? No, I just said I'm, sh I'm sure you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I do have a question more actually, yeah. uh, but sure. uh, since uh, I was expecting to bring it up in this season, I think it will be complicated to formulate it and then uh, explain uh, what it is about. So maybe I will just keep it for the next season and, and yeah, we'll see. You're welcome. Or reach out to <laughs> I will challenge you again yeah. <laughs> next yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, I have included some uh, resources the the link to uh, SQL BI's calculated DAX they have about a video series of 10 videos about uh, two or three minutes each uh, they are uh, very good and all of <laughs> Alberto's and uh, Marco's uh, videos that are on the YouTube channel are very interesting if you love DAX or hate DAX. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, also the DAX patterns. That's also a SQL BI site uh, where you can find a, a, a lot of common scenarios when uh, when you struggle with, uh, with DAX. And maybe you should also include the um, DAX guide and the DAX that do. Yeah, I will, I will uh, supply that as well. Good idea. Uh, and then uh, some commercials. The The next uh, session will be in two weeks about uh, visualizations. Uh, and uh, Mike Carlo from Power BI Tips has uh, uh, <coughs> will be joining us there. So if you have questions uh, about yeah, best practice in, in visualizations, uh, when to use uh, pie charts and when not to use them, or uh, Whatever uh, you can, uh, there is a link in the event uh, site on Meetup where you can uh, put in your questions. So please, as many questions as possible, and we will try to answer them all. And then uh, I've just scheduled another meeting on the uh, on the 16th of March with the the famous Quiz Web, 
who will do a session about the, the new feature uh, where we can use direct query against the Power BI data set uh, slash uh, Azure analysis services. Uh, yeah, I, I will absolutely recommend you participating in both. I hope you have the time for that. Otherwise, uh, Just is uh, doing a, uh, again, this, this week, a Power BI quiz with uh, Alberto Ferrari, actually around uh, the the direct uh, the same as Quip, Chris Webb will be talking about. So yeah, join there and you'll get a chance to win uh, a gift card to Lego.com uh, for one hundred dollars, actually. And uh, please evaluate uh, today's session. Uh, you can scan using your mobile phone and you will. Uh, enter a uh, Microsoft form, uh, or you can uh, type in the uh, the short URL, ask experts, DAX, and you'll be taken to the form. So please uh, give us feedback or suggestions to, to future sessions. Otherwise, just uh, again, thank you, Gerhard, for participating today, uh, and uh, thank you all the rest of you for attending today's session. So have a nice day, all of you. I will stay here for a few minutes. If so, if you have uh, other questions, you are free to put it in the chat. So have a great day and uh, see you in uh, two weeks. Just made it for the farewell, Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome, Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope you had a good session. I'll just stop the recording.